Praise God, brethren, and welcome to our Wednesday Fellowship. Today, the 17th of August, 2022. I want to take this chance to thank God for the life that he has given me and you, those who are here and those uh, watching from home and even uh, from the diaspora. But before we go into our teaching tonight, I request that we go before the Lord with a word of prayer. Our God and Father, thank you for your grace and for your mercies. Thank you for your favors and thank you for your mercies that uh, are everlasting. You have given us an opportunity to gather before you, to stand before you. Lord, we invite you into our presence, O oh God, that you may speak to us. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your word. And thank you for everything that you have done. Thank you for giving us a positive attitude, even as we gather before you, so that we may understand from you the oracles that you have prepared for us. We thank you and we bless you, for this is a prayer of faith. Through Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My name is Matthew Kaburu, and uh, Christ has saved me, and I've had an encounter with him. Tonight, I want us to discuss about fixing our attitudes. Fixing our attitudes. And I would want us also to find time to discuss and understand what attitudes are. But before then, we we'll read a scripture from the book of uh, from the book of uh, from the book of uh, Luke, chapter number nine, verse number fifty-one through. 56. And this is what the Bible says. 51. And it came to pass when the time was come that he should be received up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. And they sent messengers before his face. And they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make bread for him. And they did not receive him, because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, will thou that we command fire, to come down from heaven and consume them, even as Elias did. But he turned and rebuked them and said, You know not what man of spirit ye are of. For the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. Brethren, I chose this topic because it's not uh, long since we left the electioneering period. And I know you experience, as much as I do, so much attitudinal behaviors at times. So what is an attitude? An attitude is a settled way of thinking or feeling about something. A settled way of thinking or a feeling about something. If your attitude, for example, is negative, at one point, you need to see life the other way. If your attitude is negative, you see things from a negative way. If your attitude is positive, you also see things from the positive way. If you have a thankful attitude, you see things you encounter as gifts to be thankful of. I may not be able to change the world as, as I see around me, but I can change the way I see the world within me. 
that's one of the theologians who say that statement, that I may not be able to change the world I see around me, but I can change the way I see the world within me. So, Paul, at one point in the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verse 4, he reminds the Philippians, Rejoice in the Lord always. And he repeats saying, And again, I will say, Rejoice. Being joyful is a matter of chance, it's not a matter of chance or circumstance. It is a matter of deciding to be judged. And this is the decision of whether or not we will rejoice is left upon to us. That is why Paul keeps reminding the Philippians, and again I say rejoice. And this is the best way to fix attitudes. We have just come out of the electioneering period. Some of us are hurt because of the choices we made, some that were not popular to others, and they were popular to others also. But again, that die, or whatever you did, or whatever role you played, you did your part. And as a Christian, tonight, talking to Christians, wherever you are, my message to you is that it is the right time now to fix our attitudes. Why? Because an attitude is the eye of the soul. Your attitude determines how you view life. Attitude is the face of your life. Your attitude determines how you appear to others. Other people mirror the attitude they sense we have. Jesus put it like this, the way you treat others is the way you will be treated. When the attitude we possess places others first and we see people as important, then your perspective will reflect their viewpoint, not yours. Until we walk in the other person's shoes, we see life through another, another's eyes, we will be like the man who agreed jumped off his car one day because he had knocked so many people's cars that day. And so one day he comes out of his car and grieve and shouts to one person he had just knocked his car from behind. And he says, I don't know where your eyes are. Where do you drive to? Where do you waste your mind when you are driving the cars on the road? And instead of coming out and saying, I'm sorry, he came out angry and shouting at the person he had already wronged. How many times do we find ourselves that we have wronged people, and instead of feeling apologetic at times, we go hurting them even more? Now, how do we give our attitude a face lift? The scripture we have just read, Jesus had desired to be in a place and he sent his messengers ahead of him, asking them, please go ahead of me and see if the Samaritan village where I intend to go things will be ready for me to come. So when he sent his disciples, Peter, James, and of course John, to see what was happening, he realized that the people there were not willing to receive Jesus. And so when they got so disappointed, they came back to Jesus and told him, you see now these people, seems they are not ready to receive you. I wish we can pray for fire to come from heaven and swallow them all. This is because of attitude. How many times do we wish that people that compete with us at times are completely swept away? How many times have we uttered negative words towards people whom we don't like? People whom we feel are not worthy. People whom we feel are not the right people. Paul keeps telling the Philippians in chapter 4, verse 5. He keeps reminding them, let your gentleness be evident to all. Let your gentleness be, 
be evident to all so that they may see because our attitude as Christians will either change our way people or bring them closer to Christ. And this is my prayer tonight that even as we discuss we may connect ourselves again having realized that the journey has not been easy for us even during the electioneering period we need now to regain our conscience again and come back to the reality changing our attitude and fixing it to the positive things that matter for the kingdom of God. Our attitude is the ear of our minds. It is our attitude that determines how you understand your world. It is the librarian, our attitude is the librarian of our past and the listener of what is present. So we may keep our attitude too much to us and it blocks us from seeing where we have come from, where we are, and where we are going. A negative past experience sometimes paralyzes our thinking and our attitudes. So where are we? Are we Christians who can easily forget and move on? Our attitude deforms the face of Christians when Christians when in our effort to be watchful we become suspicious. Some people find enemies where they are no enemies. You see people coming and mixing up things and they create enemies. We have seen it happen in churches. We have seen it happen in the political arena. We have seen it happen in families where people come out and they just want to create enemies. For they ever notice how certain people are hostile to everyone who disagrees with them. So Paul tells the Philippians again, verse number five, let your gentleness be evident. So if we are able to manage our attitude, even when things have not worked good for us, when in our determination to be bold, we become brazen, the face of Christians becomes so deformed. And we may be right, but we don't look right. What do we look like when in our desire to be frank and become rude? The Christians who boast that he always goes as paid as paid is likely to end up calling everything as paid. So that is what it's up. And even when I look at the way the church is managing even the crisis that we have now in the country, I look at the clutch who are at the front, front line trying to solve issues. I look at them and the sympathize. But I remember today one of the great theologians and the minister of the gospel, Bishop Oginde, said one statement, and this is what I decide, that the peace that we call for is not one that overlooks injustice. If we have to change that attitude, as Christians, we will be looking for peace. And that peace that we need, it must come together with solving the issues of injustices that have happened in the society. He says, we find it easy to pray for peace, but rarely do we pray for justice. Peace is comfortable. It affords us dealing with issues. Justice is uncomfortable. It focuses us to address the difficult issues. May we learn to pray for both peace and justice. In most cases, justice leads to lasting peace. And this is what we lack in our churches. This is what we lack in our families. Because we cry more for the attitude of peace when we don't want to see how we can solve issues, difficult issues, hard issues that can cause a lasting solution for our peace in the entire continent and the world. So, Paul again reminds the Philippians in verse number 6 of the same book, Philippians chapter number 4. He says, do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, 
present your requests to God. Being thankful for everything is not cheap unless you have a positive attitude. Because at times when you lose terribly and your opponent is rejoicing, saying these are the choices that are godly. Our choice was godly. Yours was ungodly. It can bring a Christian down. And where the mess is happening is more even in the church of God. Where Christians are rejoicing about their, about their candidates, about their outcomes, ignoring the outcome of their fellow Christians. And instead of coming together, there is now division. But what does the Bible say in verse number 6? Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. It is God who understands our attitudes more than any other person. Attitude is also a voice of your heart. Attitude is also a voice of your heart. It is, a, it is the voice of my heart. Your attitude will determine how you relate to those around you. How I relate with those around me. It is never a contest until it is expressed. It is more honest and more consistent than your words. Attitude always tells how things really are with you. In Proverbs 27, 7, the Bible says, As he thinketh in his heart, so is he. As he thinketh in his heart, so is he. How many people do we see? How do you feel the world is treating you? Is the world excellent for you? If it is excellent, you will receive excellent results. If you feel like it, it doesn't matter, then the world also will respond to give you with them, to give to reward you with the average or less results. If you feel so badly about the world, you seem to have negative feedback from life. But again, attitude is the voice of your heart. Your attitude will determine how you relate to those around you. That is most important. Look at the attitudes of the examples that we find in the Bible. The case of the Samaritan woman when Jesus went to the, to the well and asked her for a cup of tea, a, a cup of water. She was positive. Though Jews and the Samaritans never shared anything in common, she had a positive attitude. The widow from Samaria who welcomed Elisha and she, she prepared a meal for her, for him. She read a lot of fortunes. The tone of Paul to the church of Corinthians, he keeps reminding them, rejoice and again I say rejoice. Look at the attitude of Jesus Christ when he felt that he needed to feed the 5,000 people with the, a few loaves of bread and fish. He was very positive. Though it was not possible in the eyes of his disciples, he had a positive attitude. And they cared and they considered, as we started saying that, when you lift other people's needs more above your own personal needs, then you have a positive attitude and it will give you a reward. How many times do we see street families and ignore them? How many times do people ask for alms from you and we ignore them? Sometimes we say they will be using this money to buy bangi. They will be using this money to buy beer. They will be using this money to do a lot of dirty things and we ignore them because of how we think about the attitude we have about the world outside us. How do we see the story of Esther in the Bible? She risked her life just to pass a message to the king. 
because if she was going to remain silent, both her and all of the Hindus who are going to be killed alive. Having positive attitude, even when things are not looking good, the journey might not be smooth. We walk through, people stay aside and look at you. Some will come to join you too much later. But that journey is befitting if you have a positive attitude to conquer. Jesus says, if one takes away your shirt, give them your coat too. A very positive attitude. For us to get to our destiny, we must remain in control of situations. This is only possible through prayer. And the prayer is the best attitude a Christian can have. As Paul said, do not be anxious about everything, but on everything, give it to, through prayer and thanksgiving. I know you know you hate it, yes, and you are not a darling to anyone else in this world. Even in the neighborhood where you stay, even at the place where you work, remain focused as my brother. And thank God, who is the supplier of all happiness and need, our needs. I know you could be going through painful sicknesses. You could be going through a lot of pains, even through you, the economy that is passing through you. I pray that God may give you courage again to have a positive attitude as you walk through that journey. Because in the near future, you rejoice again because you have known the secret. As Paul minded the Philippians, give in everything, give thanks to God in prayer. If only we can stay in control, then God will supply our needs according to his riches in glory. My desire this evening, brethren, from wherever you are watching, is that that burden you have, that you may change the world view, that you may change that world view on how you view things. You may have viewed your business to be a collapsing business all the time. You may have viewed your family as a collapsing family all the time. You may have viewed your children as a disgrace all the time. You may have viewed your ministry as a failing ministry all the time. You may have viewed as your job as a disgrace to you all the time. You may have viewed that the pay you get for your salary every time is a mega night because you have worked too hard. I ask you to change your attitude and remain focused in prayer through the